the Twins will be the 2019 World Series champions. You heard it here first. I promise you that. What is going on guys, Mills here, bringing you some fire content on the Fire Day 18 channel. In today's video, everyone, we are going to be doing some diamond postseason card predictions, guys. So what I'm going to basically be doing is I'm going to be trying to predict any card that will be coming out in the new Diamond Dynasty stream or be revealed, slash cards that could be on LB The Show 19, guys. So basically what I did was I grabbed a list of nine players that I know are, that are pretty iconic great players that I think deserve to be in the show, and some that have been in the this show before. Like, they've, they've actually been in the game, and maybe they'll make reprisals in this game, or there'll be some new legends revealed to us that we haven't even been able to play yet. So, without further ado, get a snack or whatever, let's get right started with this thing. Alright, so the first person we're going to be talking about here is Greg Maddox, guys. So, if you guys do not know who Greg Maddox was, I'd be surprised if you didn't. He was a very famous Atlanta Braves pitcher in the 1990s. He helped the Braves win a World Series in the 90s after the Minnesota Twins obviously beat him in 1991. No Twins. Anyways, but yeah, Greg Maddox was an amazing pitcher. He threw very fast. He was a very, very, very good pitcher. He was like the ace for the Atlanta Braves for them. He, he was kind of a he, he was a very, very, very good player for them. Very good. Like He's probably the best, biggest reason why they won the World Series. Anyways, I feel like they should bring him back in the game, mostly because I feel like he would be a very good card to use. He would be a card that would be sort of nice, and he would be a good fit for the game, especially because they did change all the pitch, pitch speeds in the game. I feel like Greg Maddox would be a great addition just to kind of try it out, you know, try out all those pitch speeds. So that'd be pretty cool. Hopefully they give him around like 98, 9 overall. But like I said, I can't not guess what year they're ever going to give him only the card itself. So just let's just hear let's just hope that Greg Max just hops into the game because he also I think I also heard he was in LB08 as well. Like he was in a bunch of the older games. So obviously he has been in the game before, but they haven't had him return in a while. So get him back in, please. Get him back. Alright, second player we're gonna be talking about was a, actually a player from LB16 the show. I believe his name is Mark Teixeira, guys. So he, he retired two years ago. He was a pretty famous baseball player, not going to lie. He played for the Texas Rangers and New York Yankees, a switch-hitting first baseman. He was also a really good fielder as well, not even lying about that. He was a very good fielder at first base. He made some terrific diving plays. You can just look it up on YouTube for yourself, and you'll find some pretty nice plays of him diving and making, obviously making the play. So, anyways, Mark Teixeira was really known for being a great power hitter. He hit a lot of bombs both sides of the... So that's what really proved like his proved his like skills as a player. And they did have an LB16 as a 90 overall flashback. He had a lot of power. I would just like to see him back in the game because I think he'd be a very good card that many people would use. Many that many LB the show players would use, I think, just in general, because well, he's a he seems like he's a very good card. Like, come on, a switch hitter who can hit power on both sides of the plate, along with some pretty good contact, like that's a pretty good combination you want to have on opening day. If they are going to reveal him, they're probably going to reveal him more as a pre-order bonus, more than a legend, because he hasn't hit the Fall Hall of Fame yet, and I don't think he's an exact legend at this moment. Although, he will probably be known for how great of a switch hitter he was, no doubt. He Obviously, he isn't... He wasn't as good as he was used to be, obviously, in the past years. If they will give him a card, it's probably going to be his 2009 year, but... By the way, I still think he deserves it, just because it would be nice to get a really good switch hitter like Teixeira into the game. Alright, third player we're going to be talking about here is a player who I don't even think was in introduced into the game. This guy is Kurt Schilling. If you guys don't know who he was, he was actually a pretty, pretty, pretty popular pitcher. He played for the Boston Red Sox, but the Arizona Diamondbacks were his most notable team, however. he also He's also played for other teams as well, but the team that I feel like he... He would easily get a card for, for is the Arizona Diamondbacks because he led the Arizona Diamondbacks to the 2001 World Series title. So, they, if you guys do not know, they played the New York Yankees in a game in a seven-game series, and Kurt Schilling was the guy pitching Game Seven. So, because of this, they were able to really like do amazing. They were able to get a bunch of nice. They were able to make some pretty good plays, shut down the Yankees, and get that win. They are going to make Kurt Schilling a card to the game. They'll probably give him a postseason card because he was also really good for, like, the whole postseason, not even only the World Series. Like, he's proven himself to be 
one of the best pitchers probably in in like baseball history. One of obviously he's nowhere near the best, but he was definitely a very good pitcher before his time. He had a pretty good career ERA of about 3.48, I believe. It might be a little less, might be a little more. Either way, he had some ERA somewhere in that range, which is pretty good for I think a pitcher at that time, especially since there were a bunch of it was around the steroid area when era when everyone was starting to get really really juiced up and powerful, but overall, Kirk Schilling was able to really pitch. He was a capable pitcher. He deserves a card just because of his postseason in a row since 2001. Fourth guard we're predicting here is an absolute legend in baseball history. The stats may not say it, but I think in general, he, he he's, he's a god, right? Like, he's, he's a very good player. And heck, they even have an award named after him. This guy is Roberto Clemente, guys. He played for most notably the Pittsburgh Pirates, and he was a really good player, all right? He he hit very well for RBIs. He was a clutch player. He led the Pirates to a World Series in like the ninth in the late 1960s. He was a very just a very, very, very talented player. Very, very talented. I feel like they, they should give him a card in this game because why haven't they? He's literally an iconic name in baseball. Like Literally, they've given Cal Ripken one. He was iconic for being super consistent on the field and also just for playing so many games, but they're not giving it to, like, they haven't, haven't given it to Clemente yet, and they even have an award named after him. He's clearly a very notable player, and I don't even think I remember them even bringing him to the game. It'll be 15, 16, 17, 18, so get him back to 19. Like, it was kind of sad and tragic to see the way he went pretty similar to Roy Holiday, but he was still a really great player, very deserving. If he is probably going to get a card, he would probably have really high contact. Either way, I'd still bring him in the game just because he would be a very excellent contact hitter if he is going to be one in the game. And so getting into 50, about 50% on the list, you could say 50% was halfway through my Roberto Clemente pick, but the fifth pick here is going to easily, and no doubtingly actually, go to Dwight Gooden. So this guy was an amazing he was a really good pitcher for the Mets in the 80s he led them to the 86 World Series title he was like one of the best pitchers in that rotation actually maybe a little bit along with Saber Hagen although Saber Hagen may have been a little more far back either way Dwight Gooden was really good he may not have been a great player off the field but he was an insane pitcher he had a very diverse uh, windup of pitches he was always very strong to play very capable player He's got, he got a lot of all-stars, and heck, he even got close to MVP one year, which thoroughly, I think, uh, in my opinion, just deserves uh, just getting a card in the game. If they are going to give him a card, it would probably be like an 89 to start off the game, maybe even a 90, and if they, I hope they give him a legend card, because he is a legend. A legend in Mets history and baseball history. Even even if he isn't one of the biggest names you'll see come up there, like Babe Ruth or Hank Aaron and all that, he's still going to definitely at least get a chance, because he was a really good player. Like, when he's a really good player and he's delivered and he was a part of a World Series roster, he's probably going to get one, get a card. So if they get him into the game, I'd be all in for him, man. I'd be all in. The next player I'm talking about was a player actually in LB16 in the show, but he was only a silver card, guys. Nick Swisher, guys. He, he's our sixth card. He, you, may not have rec you may not recognize the name immediately because he has fallen off the map a bit, but... I'll only just refresh your memory and say that he was a player from both the New York Yankees, the Atlanta, and the Atlanta Braves, and he hit a lot. He hit for power a lot, right? He was a very good power hitter. He, he has a very nice swing. I remember he was actually pretty good for the Yankees when he was on the team. Like he obviously wasn't around the level of uh, Alfonso Soriano or Derek Jeter, but he was a very, very good player on the field. Very deserving, I think, of like a card again like they gave him one in LB16 and he was only a silver a bit disappointing don't you think I think they should give him a diamond pre-order bonus if possible just because he was a terrific hitter in the game he's also very capable of even getting into LB the show like if they got him in LB16 you may as well get him in in LB17 or something heck he was also an all-star he, he had like 803 career RBIs of 245 home runs he was just overall an insane player it is kind of sad that he actually is retired now. That's probably why he's falling off the map. But either way, he was still, I think, in my opinion, one of the better players for the Yankees. He wasn't much of an average hitter though, so if they are gonna give him a card, it's probably gonna be so it's gonna probably have a ton of power. Like a shit ton of power. And I mean power's gonna be pretty good now, Lee's show. And if contact's gonna be viable, 
you can balance out the lineup with Nick Swisher. He'd be honestly a very solid card to pick up, I think, at the start of the game from a pre-order bonus. Sole reason why he deserves deserves the spot. All right, so the seventh card here, I'll just give you a very detailed description. I'll try not to say that. He was a closer for the Yankees from the 90s, from all 2000s, to the bit early 2010. He has the most saves in ML almost MLB history. Not almost MLB history, MLB history. And, well, what else can I say, man? He, he, he got voted unanimously into the Hall of Fame. I don't need to say his name. I need to only say one word. Rivera, man. Get Mariano Rivera into the game. We fans have been asking for it. He would be one of the best closers in the game. It would be a bit tough to implement him in there, though, because he was a really good closer. So I think like uh, getting a card of this caliber into the game very early would be a bit of like a like an easy way out for getting a very locked in closer for the rest of the year. So if they are gonna give him a card, it's gonna probably be a card like more like an impact veteran slash maybe all-star card. Like if they are gonna give him a card in the future, they'll probably give him like a signature Mariano Rivera, which is like, what I'm hoping they give because he was a, he's an absolute legend in MLB history. He actually has doesn't have that many blown saves in history. As they say, Mariano say uh, Mariano Rivera had less blown saves than more people have walked on the moon. So just that sole fact alone, just, just 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 give him a card in this game, please. Please, Ramon. We need Mariano Rivera. He would be a very dominant card. I'm hoping that in the this time national stream they reveal him as a signature. That would be really cool. I would love to see that. Heck, if they even give him a moment in this game, I'd be perfectly fine with that. Just get him in the game somehow, please. Get him, get the rights for him. Our second player we're gonna be talking about here, he's actually, he's a legend like Mariano Rivera, but in a completely different way. Not even because of the fact that he was a very good hitter. By the way, position that he did play was left field and third base. Anyways, this player name is Mini Minoso, guys. So, he played for four decades, guys. Four, played in four different decades. The 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. Now you may be asking me, how is that even possible? Well, it is possible if you do get yourself, if, if you are able to play a game in like those different decades slash years. He played probably full seasons in the 50s, 60s, and the 70s, and he, or and maybe like one or two games in the 70s, but he also was able to get a game in there in the 80s, which leads up to four decades, man. That's pretty insane. His long, his long career must have literally been big, man. Just because of that, like, that's just amazing, right? But that's not all that he's known for, okay? Like, he only, he wasn't only known for playing in four different decades. By the way, he's the only player to do this in LB history. No one else has played four decades. He was also an RBI hitter. He hit over 1,000 RBIs in his MLB career. He had a 298 career batting average. He was a nine-time All-Star. And he was a three-time gold glove. So if they are giving him the card in this game, it's gonna easily be a card with very high contact, great plate mission, and pretty good fielding, guys. If not great. So I would, I think he would be a great addition to the game, guys. He's also in the Hall of Fame as well. Just get it. I would just like to see him in the game solely for his contact. If he is gonna be in the game, he's probably gonna be 89. So I think he would be a very nice third base left field pickup for for MLB The Show 19. He could also be a very good card in the game as well. He has a lot of potential. And I think it's possible that they can announce him more as a surprise. Like, you'll see this guy, and probably a lot of people will recognize him. I think more for his four decades than his 1,000 RBIs, which is really impressive. Like, it's very hard to obtain 1,000 RBIs in a career, even now. Like, I can only name, like, probably five more active players, maybe, with 1,000 RBIs, who holds being one of them. No one's kind of insane. It's like Andrew Beltre, too. He's also, I think, got to be on the RBIs. Insane stuff. Like, you know, it's, it's crazy. Okay, guys. Final card I'm going to be talking about here. This is a card that I think a lot of people are recommending right now. This is a card that I generally want to. Like, they have given us... They, have, they haven't given us Mariano Rivera up yet. But if they give us this closer as well, I'd also be glad. And it's a high possibility, too. There's, a, there's actually a lot of hope for this card. Let's get Randy Johnson in the game, all right? Like, he has the second most strikeouts in baseball history, only trailing Nolan Ryan for the most. 
he was a five-time Cy Young winner, ten-time ten X All Star, and he, you know he's, he's he was really good. He played for both the Mariners, the Mariners and Arizona Diamondbacks, notably. He was very good for them. He actually he had a pretty good record too, actually, in baseball history. He had a record of three hundred and three in one sixty six. Pretty great rec career record. I mean, obviously he has slightly like he doesn't have like a halfway ratio of wins and losses, but he was mostly known for throwing out getting people out. He struck out a lot of people, which is probably why everyone knows. Him. But he was also a great pitcher too. Like he has a three point two nine career ERA. That would probably give him an, a pretty good card in this game. So hopefully they reveal him as a legend or signature in this game. I would really like to see it. If they are going to give him a card, give him something around the 89 zone. Maybe, 90, maybe even above 90, like 91. Like That would even not even be a stretch considering this guy was one of the best pitchers in MLB history. So there you have it, guys. That, that's my, that is my nine-player list. All right, so if you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like. Subscribe for you. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new to this channel. If you want more content like this, please tell me. I will make more of these types of vids. And tell me which guys you think I missed that should be in the game. I didn't try to get a I didn't try to compile a bunch of players everyone was talking about that should be in LB the show 19. I tried to come up with with, uh, with like players that not many people are talking about, which is in the end, I think, what you should do, but Either way, tell me what you, who you guys think I missed that should be in the game in the comments below. I'll see y'all next Thursday stream, everyone. Hope everyone has a great day. Peace!